as Dave, Pastor Dave had set up earlier as of people sharing their testimonies. He's also done that <clears throat> for this Sunday as well. And uh, so I'm going to ask Wendy to come and share her testimony this morning. <clears throat> I am grateful for um, all the history that I could share, but I'm not going to <laughs> today. It's too much. Um, but I'm so grateful that this church is supporting uh, training children up in the ways of the Lord, because that's how I was raised on the farm east of Calgary. And my parents were very much in love with each other and in love with the Lord and his word. And so they just passed on in every which way, ways to memorize scripture and to apply it and to enjoy evidences of the Lord in all of our life. Whether it was a hard time that we were going through as, as a farm family or as the church family that I grew up in, too, as well. I'm just thankful for all of that history that made it possible for so many things that the Lord could lead us into further. And so as I grew up, there were so many missionaries and wonderful speakers and singers and music all over the place, and it was just wonderful to grow up that way. And so then the Lord just uh, gave a burden in my heart to be a missionary. And at that time, <clears throat> in our little farm community, there's no other Christian young man at all that we knew for miles around. And so I just expected to go singly. So I started the path of wanting to go to Bible school and everything like this. And the Lord had a nice little treat for me. And he brought John, at, who became a Christian, and he left Saskatchewan, moved out to our area to work, came to our church, and we met, and the Lord kind of led us together. Wonderful. Wow, the Lord has good plans in mind, always. But he also felt the, the desire to be a missionary, too. So in our hearts, that meant uh, training with a mission and going to Bible school for more training, etc., which we did. And so we just expected that that's the direction we go overseas. Um, but the Lord, again, had other plans, and it was good. And we had so much to learn so that we ended up um, in a little pastorate that we hadn't planned to be pastoring, and they just chose to have us there, and we stayed there for over four years. That's where our three kids were born, too. Oh, and that's other stories. But um, then we said, well, okay, no, now's the time to go on deputation to keep aiming at the mission field. Well, we moved to another place to then go on deputation to raise our support. And you know what? It didn't come in, but the Lord had another plan because then there was another church along the way that really was looking for a pastor. And so the Lord put us in that spot for another few years. Um, we sure had a lot to learn. It was a whole new culture too that we came into that one. So it was good. It was kind of missionary without being called a missionary. And then uh, the Lord led us to take some more training and refreshment um, at Karenport. And so we've had a lot of Bible school training that's just filling our hearts and souls. And then the Lord gave us so many ways to share that with so many other people. So then when we moved to Manitoba to pastor there for the next 20 plus years, uh, the Lord gave us so many opportunities because we worked with the camp, a great big camp just three kilometers south of the church, plus a growing church and a growing youth ministry and everything like that. And so we had lots of people to be speaking to the Lord about 
and just to be useful to the Lord in all the different ways that it gave us. And so it's been quite a life, and we've had so many different places we've moved to within Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and then now back to Alberta because my mom developed dementia, and she needed us a lot closer to help her. So <coughs> we moved here a few years ago, and the Lord gave us another seven years with her before she passed away. And so that was a new ministry too, to her and to the rest of the extended family. And now in our community where we live, hey, we got the best neighbors possible. <laughs> right across the street are the Bransons. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, best place to live. And uh, we have such a good church family here too. So the Lord just keeps leading you all through your life. So teach your children to just really honor him and see him in all the different places that he shows up in your life and how he directs you. Um, we thank you for being our church family right now. Thank you. So this morning we're going to take a look at a theme in Colossians chapter 1, praying for one another. <clears throat> to, as you read through the scriptures, it is definitely one of the major things that as a Christian we need to be involved in. And as a Christian, it's not uncommon for people to ask us to pray for them. In fact, the Apostle Paul, as he wrote to the Thessalonians, he said, brethren, pray for us. And as you read what Paul is writing and some of the experiences they've gone through, he definitely needed prayer. <clears throat> but maybe you know someone um, that's going through a difficult time. Uh, maybe the Holy Spirit is prompting you and bringing somebody's name or, and situation to mind uh, and prompting you to pray for that individual or people or whoever it might be. But where do we start? How do we pray for them? Or do we just say, oh, Lord, bless them? Well, the Lord can't just absolutely bless everyone uh, in the position that they're in. And I just want to begin with Psalm 119 and uh, verses 67. It says, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Verse 71, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. There's sometimes the Lord has to do something, allow a few uh, hardships in our life to get our attention, to point us in the right direction so that he can bless us and to be an encouragement to others. And so Colossians chapter 1, I want to go through just uh, a few of the, uh, the verses there. And uh, Colossians chapter 1, uh, starting at verse 3 through 14, and Paul gives just a very brief outline as to how he is praying for the church. Probably he would know some of the individuals in it as well. <clears throat> and so he starts off, We give thanks to God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints. And because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, which you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. Now, why would Paul pray for a group of individuals, a church like this, uh, that they seem to be doing so well? In fact, uh, verse 8, if you just take a jump down there, who also declared to us of your love in the Spirit. In other words, to have the Holy Spirit in us, we need to be saved. So they're already saved. And then he mentions the fact that they have some great qualities of faith, of love, and hope. These are Christian qualities that the Lord desires in each and every one of us. They seem to be doing so well. Why pray for them? Well, I believe that as we take a look at the Word of God and what Paul is laying out in just the beginning of this chapter, the, the next number of verses, that our salvation is just the beginning 
of our Christian journey. When we accept Jesus Christ, that's the start, but there's much more to come. And so he gives us this brief outline, <clears throat> and he is praying very intentional for their spiritual growth. And that's a key for each and every one of us. We accept Jesus Christ, but we do not just, quote, stay at that level. We are to continue to mature. <clears throat> so verse 9, for this reason also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. <clears throat> he is praying for wisdom and knowledge and spiritual understanding. In other words, it, to gain the knowledge of God, wisdom is using knowledge and not only knowledge, but pointing us in the right direction where God can use us and bless us. So Paul is praying for this church. You're past now the salvation point. He's praying for wisdom and their continual knowledge and to apply that knowledge to follow the right direction according to scripture. And the basis of this is we as Christians need to read and to study the scripture, and that's how we gain spiritual understanding. As we study the scriptures, we will start to gain the spiritual understanding and what the Lord intends for us. So Paul is praying this part for them. And then he continues on, <clears throat> that you may have a walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Did you pick up that last phrase? The fact is increasing in the knowledge of God. How do you do that? You read the scriptures. You study the scriptures. But a walk worthy of the Lord. We can tell people we are Christians. We can tell people we have faith. We can tell people we love them. But the profession of our faith is supported by our lifestyle and how we speak and treat other people. We need the knowledge of God to continue growing in his grace and to use that wisdom uh, that he has supplies so that we can treat and speak pe uh, properly so that uh, it is pleasing to the Lord. It's continual spiritual growth. Just because I have accepted Jesus Christ does not mean that I do not need to know anymore. As you continue to age, as you continue to grow in grace, according to what Paul is saying here, we never come to the end of learning about who our Lord and Savior is. So Paul is saying, have a walk worthy of, of the Lord. Our testimony needs to point other people to the Lord. We are different because we have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and being fruitful, it is something, if you go back to the Gospel of John, something that the Lord not only can bless, but a, something that the, is going to last for eternity. A life that the Lord is able to bless and draw attention to himself. And then verse 11, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Paul is talking about service here. He's talking to the church. He knows that they are busy doing a number of things, but he is talking, he is praying for their service to the Lord. And yes, even as Christians today, we are going to need patience. Of course, this is, a, a, this is the main thing that everybody's striving for, I'm sure. We need patience. And just because we are serving the Lord does not mean to say that there won't be difficult times. We will need long-suffering as well. But Paul reminds the Christians, it's the Lord's work. We serve him in his strength and not our own. We are practicing what we know of the Lord. We need a change of heart and mind from our old ways, the way we used to do things. And the Holy Spirit needs to be in control of our service for the Lord. But not only that, the fact that as uh, when the Lord is in charge 
of our serving him that we are able to serve with joy, enjoying what we are doing, serving the Lord. And above all, the joy is that even though there's difficult times, it's not the circumstances that we are focusing on. It is the Lord. We serve with joy, and that is being fruitful to the Lord. We are serving him. Verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. <clears throat> As Paul continues to write, giving thanks, Paul is praying that the uh, Colossian church and all that's involved with this church would be a thankful people who serve the Lord. This is a choice. We choose to be thankful. And as Paul is writing to the Colossians, and as he wrote a number of letters in the New Testament, uh, in fact, the verse 3, it starts out, We give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Colossians chapter 2, verse, <clears throat> verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Chapter 3, we continue on. <clears throat> Verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you are called in one body and be thankful. Colossians 4, 2. Continue earnestly in prayer. Be vigilant in it with thanksgiving. If you just, uh, just so that the Colossian people, you might say, are, are not being singled out in any particular way. <clears throat> Ephesians uh, chapter 5 and verse uh, 20. <clears throat> Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as Paul wrote to the Thessalonians, <clears> 1 <throat> Thess Thessalonians chapter 5, 18, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Did you pick up the message in what Paul is encouraging the church and the Christians to be? To be a thankful people, to be thankful for answered prayer, to be thankful in what the Lord has provided and what he has done. <clears throat> and then we continue on verses uh, 13 and 14 in for, uh, Colossians. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love, in whom we have <clears throat> redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. <clears throat> As we take a look at this, it's not only to be thankful, we have been delivered from the power of of darkness. This is something to be greatly thankful for. We are to remember and appreciate our salvation. As <clears throat> Paul wrote to the Ephesians, Ephesians uh, chapter 2, verse 10, <clears throat> we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. As believers, there is a path for us to follow. There is a path in which we have standards to live by, that he has prepared before, that he can bless us in this direction in which he has chosen for each and every one of us to live. But not only that, <clears throat> Revelation chapter, not Revelation, John chapter 11, verse 25 and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. This one fits in. We are sitting here today. Maybe you didn't realize that, but you are. But we're not always going to be here. This is not our home. Earth is not our home. We are here today and we're not staying here. We have a resurrected life to look forward to. And that path that Jesus has given to us is leading us in that direction. 
And so with the knowledge and the wisdom that we have gained from before in the study of Scripture, we do not come into heaven and see Jesus Christ and say, who are you? No, we already know him through his word. We understand who he is. We are expecting to see him because of the price that he has paid and the provision that he has given us that we might have eternal life in the place that he has prepared for us. So Paul is praying a prayer of encouragement for these people. So how do we pray for other people? He is praying a prayer of encouragement to keep trusting and knowing and studying the word of God to learn who our Lord and Savior is. <clears throat> and we are placed in the body of Christ for eternity, and therefore our path is leading us in that direction. So when someone comes to you and asks them, or the Lord brings somebody to mind to pray for an individual, how do we pray for that person? Yes, there's some definite needs, but don't forget the other half. Don't forget the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Pray for the wisdom of the scriptures that they are reading day by day, and Lord willing that they are reading it day by day, <clears throat> that they are gaining spiritual understanding to be able to make decisions that glorify the Lord day by day, week by week, and for uh, years to come. And not only that, that we need to pray that they have a walk worthy of the Lord and the things that they are involved in is going to be fruitful, not just for today, but for eternity that the Lord is able to bless them in such a way that others would take notice. This person has been spending time with Jesus Christ. And not only that, strengthened with all might according to his power. We're not doing the ministry and the service in our own strength. But we need to pray that they have patience. Yes, there's going to be some difficult times. But we need to pray for these people that they would have joy as they continue to serve the Lord in spite of the circumstances. <clears throat> and verse 12 says we need to pray for individuals and people to be a thankful people. To remember to say thanks for things that we have received. <laughs> Have we spent time in the last while saying, Lord, thank you for, and we continue to list what the Lord has provided, the answers to prayers and things like that? Verses 13 and 14 talks about he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Do we understand the significance of what Paul is saying here? We have been delivered. Yes, darkness is still out there. But we have been delivered from it, and we have been delivered because of the blood that Jesus Christ has shed on the cross for us. And not only that, when we have sinned, we can come to him with the very same verse that talks about the forgiveness of sins. Do we understand the burdens that are lifted because of what Jesus Christ has done. So Paul is praying very intentional for a group of Christians that they would continue on, but the spiritual growth, the spiritual understanding, just because we have accepted Jesus Christ, we haven't learned it all yet. There is so much more to learn. And as we pray for friends, family, neighbors, whoever they might be, Use this as a guide. We may not understand all of the difficulties that people are going through, but we all need that knowledge of God, spiritual understanding. We all need wisdom. We all need to increase in the knowledge of God and to be patient, long-suffering, thankful, uh, appreciate our salvation. We all need these things. So we still pray for the people's needs, yes. 
but let's not forget to pray for their spiritual growth and the increasing in the knowledge of God. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we truly want to thank you <clears throat> for your word today. As we read it, we are responsible for studying it, to read it, and we ask that you would give us the Holy Spirit to understand it according to what your word says. And not, <clears throat> not only that, Lord, but to apply it to our hearts, our, our lives, and all of the circumstances that we find ourselves in. We look to you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise and glory for all that you have provided. <clears throat> and may we be a very thankful people. We have been delivered from judgment. We have been delivered uh, because of what you have provided. And may we be thankful for our salvation. And may our lives show our thankfulness to you. And thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.